Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani. Welcome to lesson 7 of cost or costing methods. Lesson 7 features the joint and buy products. Now, when talk of joint and buy products, of course, since we are looking at the process costing, as we do production in terms of processes, there are some uh, products which have, been, uh, have to be produced jointly in the same process. And at the end of the process, we may end up having some other uh, pseudo uh, products. Now, when we talk of joint products, we'll begin with joint products. Now, <clears throat> these are two or more products produced in the same process and separated at a certain point. They are group of individual products produced simultaneously together with each product making a significant sale value. That is, they are recognized as main products. They are identified as individual products at a certain stage of completion. So you say that there is a group of units, in fact a group of products, uh, individual products, which are produced in the same process and they are produced together, but at a particular stage of completion, they are actually separated and you can be able now to have the sale value, different sale value to different uh, individual products. So they are main products. Now the features include, one, they are produced in the same process. Two, they cannot be distinguished from each other until separation point. Three, each product has a substantial sale value. And four, they may require further processing after separation. Now, when we talk of that are the products, they are produced the same process, that's the main feature. That's why they are called joint. They will not be called joint if they are not produced in the same process. At the same time, they cannot be distinguished before you separate them. And that's why they are called joint. But after separation, for that to have main products, they must be separated and then you have the uh, different products. Then also, uh, where they have substantial value. So none of the product is a byproduct of the other. Um, their main products, they are targeted. In fact, the objective is to have those products. If you are to produce jointly and you split have three products, then the objective must have been you want to have the three products at the beginning. That's the point. Then number four is that um, they, they may require further process. That's true. Why we are saying this is because as you separate them and you have different uh, products, uh, they may actually require some value addition. So therefore, you are going to put some more value to an individual product and maybe less to the other product because it depends with what product is it and how distinguishing features you'd want uh, that product to have compared to the rest. And therefore, you may require to process them further. Uh, examples of these are in oil refining, joint products arise such as petrol, we have diesel, we have paraffin. While in milk products, joint products would be, uh, we have cheese, we have ghee, we have uh, yogurt, you have butter, so and uh, other examples. So the point is that um, in the processing, you may process to get um, maybe cheese, you may process to get um, butter like that. If it is oil refining, you have the petroleum products, and therefore they are main products and they have significant uh, sale value, and that is, those are just examples. Now, accounting for joint products. Accounting for joint products. Accounting for joint products. Now, 
Joint products are not separately identified until a certain stage in processing. When individual products arise, since they are important, they are sellable. They should be separately valued for product costing purposes. The problem of valuing joint products concerns common cost or joint cost incurred up to the point of separation. For example, the cost of crude oil. The cost of crude oil. We are saying that um, we may not be able to tell what specific cost in the entire cost is for, let's say, uh, diesel. What specific cost out of the total cost is for, let's say, paraffin. So we, we have that problem that uh, we were spending an amount for all these units or all these products jointly. So separating these costs and allocating or apportioning to the individual products become our concern. Now, let's see valuation of joint products. So valuation of joint products. How, what do we recommend and how do we value this? Now, <clears throat> there are several methods which might be used to allocate joint costs to the joint products as follows. One, physical units method. Two, sales value method at split off point. While three is net realizable value method. Now, beginning with the first one, physical units method. Number one is physical units method. Physical units method. Joint costs are allocated on the basis of relative analysis of output of each product to the relative total output. This method is suitable where units of measurement are similar. However, it suffers the following limitations. One, where the products separate during the process into different states. That is, some products in gaseous states, others in liquid states, and others may be in solid states. Two, the method does not recognize the revenue earning power of the individual product which results in some products appearing to be profitable while others not. Now, those are some of the drawbacks or the limitations of this method. First of all, we are going to use the physical units. It's like saying that at the split of point and assuming that the units of measurement are the same, let's assume that um, we have the two or three products being measured, let's say using uh, kilograms, product A, product B, product C, kilograms. Or we can talk of um, liters. Let's say we're talking of, about uh, diesel, talking about petrol, talking about uh, paraffin. If they are being um, measured using liters, then that time we may use the liters to be the basis to share the costs. And that tells you if a product has more physical units, like now liters, is going to share more cost from the joint cost. If a product has less units or less a number of liters, then it's going to share less cost of the joint cost. That is the uh, method. But the drawback is when the units of measurement are not the same, where at the split of point, there are some products which are measured in terms of liters, Others maybe are measured uh, in terms of, maybe there is, a, is, a, is in terms of gaseous state. Such, if we have different unit of measurement, then it becomes a problem for us to use this method. But at the same time, the method, as much as it is simple, the problem is that it does not recognize that you can have a product which is, uh, it has a very few units than others, but it has the highest revenue. It's just like I say, the price of paraffin and uh, the price of, uh, say, uh, uh, petrol. 
you expect the price of petrol to be so high or to be higher than uh, the price of kerosene. So should we have more liters of kerosene and uh, less of um, petrol, we may think that we need to allocate more cost to kerosene. But it happens that uh, this petrol, even though there are few liters, it may attract more revenue than the kerosene. And therefore, we should allocate based on revenue earning um, capacity. But all in all, that does not hinder us from using uh, this method. So an exa a simple example is that two products, A and B, are produced in a process. Common cost at the point of separation is shillings 600,000. And the output of each product is 12,000 kgs and 24,000 kgs of product A and B respectively. Product A sells for shillings 40 per unit while product B at shillings 20 per unit. That is per kg. Allocate the joint cost using the unit method and determine the profit per product. Now we are going to use the physical units and we allocate this uh, cost and we are going to have this way. We do have a, the, a presentation. The way you present may make it simple, but if you present not in the most friendly manner, it may think that it is difficult. So we are going to have here product. These are columns. We have product. We have um, units. We have units. We have um, the price. We have the revenue. We have the joint cost. And we have the profit. So that now we can have it this way. There are only two products, so we don't require a lot. So you have product A and you have product B. Now, the number of units of product A, there are, is it 12,000 kgs? 12,000 kgs, while product 2 or B is 24,000 kgs. And this means we are dealing with a total number of units, which is 36,000 kgs. They are sold at a price of, this is 40 shillings, this 20 shillings. Then to get the revenue, if you multiply 12,000 times 40, this will give us 480,000. Uh, this will give us 24,000 times 20. This will also give us 480,000. The joint costs, at the moment, we don't know how much is for product A and how much is for product B, but at least we know jointly we have spent a total of 600,000 as provided, 600,000. Now, when we are using the units method, then, of course, we'll say the joint cost will be for product A, will be the number of units of product A, which are 12,000. You divide by total, which is 36,000. You multiply by the joint cost, which is 600,000. This will give us 12,000 divided by 36 multiplied by 600,000. This is giving us 200,000. So therefore we allocate that indeed out of 600,000 that has been spent jointly in product, um, or pro product A and B, 200 is for product B. Then for product, for product A, sorry, product B, is 24,000 units divided by 36,000. You multiply by 600,000. 
So this is 24 divided by 36, multiply by 600,000. This will give us um, 400,000. This is 400,000. So the profit is taking the revenue minus the cost. Revenue is for 80 for product A minus cost is 200. So we are having 280,000 as the profit. 280,000 as the profit. And then we have um, 480 minus 400. This we are having it as 80,000 profit. But in total, the profit is 880 plus 280. This is giving us 360,000. Thank you.